The question number seven is from the next module. That's about the parallelogram module. That's module number two. So now we will solve problems on parallelogram. And in fact, this one is one of the easiest one because you know how easy parallelograms are. Uh, there are proving problems and a bit of properties. So let's look into it. So the first type of problem, most probably I feel that these type of questions are going to be asked since it's MCQs. Seven, topic number seven is MCQ. So these must be asked. So what happens is, uh, wait, first let's see what is a parallelogram. This is a parallelogram. What does it mean? By its name, see this is the symbol, you know, parallelogram symbol. Parallel, as you can see over here by, by the name, parallel and grams. Just remember the word parallel. Why? Because both the sides are parallel, opposite sides, sorry. This is parallel to this and this side is parallel to this side. Uh, how, what are the properties? Now, whatever are the opposite angles, they are equal. Okay, these angles are equal. But they are just not equal. There is another thing. Two consecutive angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they add up to be 180 degrees. So this is a useful, useful thing. So when you add up two consecutive angles, they are supplementary. So now with this information, you can solve a lot. And one more thing is opposite sides are equal and they're also parallel. They're congruent and parallel. Now here, if this is 128, what about this S? It's 128. What about R? It'll be 180. Sorry, I'll just do write the formula as such. Q plus angle Q plus angle R will be equal to 180 because they're supplementary. So what is angle Q? It's 128. I don't know what's angle R. I need to solve it. That is equal to 180. So take this to the other side. Angle R will be equal to 180 minus 128. 130, it'll be 50, 50 plus 2, it's 52 here. So this is the answer. Now, if this is 52, then over here P is also 52. And now if this is 5, the above is 5. And if this is 3, this is also 3. So we now know all the details. Now, what do you want? R, R is 52 degrees, isn't it? Now, what is this? QR, 3. M, uh, QP, QP is 5. And lastly, MS, measure of angle is 128. That's it. Parallelogram is very, very easy. Just look at the parallelogram, solve all the sides and whatever is required. I mean, you don't need to solve all the things. What is required? Just solve that. So that's it. Now we have some real world problems. Let's look at these. Four soccer players are practicing a drill. Goalie A, where is he? Over here, is facing player B to receive the ball. Goalie A then turns X degrees, okay, X degrees to face the player A to pass her the ball. If goalie B is facing the player A to receive the ball, then through what angle measure should the goalie B turn to uh, the player B? So this is like a parallelogram over here. See, this person's head, uh, I mean, gave the ball over here and then he turned and uh, one second, this one like this. So what happened is this angle is created. Now they are spaced such that it's a parallelogram over here. So now this ball will be received by goalie B and he will have to go X angle because see this distance over here, what it was given was an X, right? If they are passing the same, you know, uh, way, then this also will be X angle. Opposite angles are basically equal. So the answer must be X degrees. Let's just check. Yes. So that's the thing. So opposite uh, angles are parallelogram are congruent when uh, basically the opposite angles are congruent, right? That's why it's angle X. This is known. This is known. If this was, say, 40 degrees, uh, no, it's not 40. It will be nearly 80 or something. If this is 70 degrees or 80 degrees, then this also will be 70 or 80, whatever is mentioned. Now we go to the sixth problem. It is to prove. What do we have to prove? It's This is the given uh, thing. They have told us BH, BDHA, this is very important, you know, proving problems, see what is there, visualize it and then try to solve it. B, over here, B, D, H, A. Okay, that's a parallelogram. Very nice. This symbol is parallelogram, right? So it's something like this. Okay, we have, we know this is a parallelogram and they have told CA. What is CA over here? Okay, this side. And CG is this side. 
they are congruent okay this is equal to this okay now look at this outer triangle two sides are congruent we don't know about ag so forget it but if two sides are congruent what does that mean it's an isosceles triangle right the base of the angles are equal so from the given here i can tell this is equal to a okay this is equal to equal and now a is equal to this we don't know anything about this so we know about these angles let's see what is needed to be proven b d h b d h is equal to a yes absolutely look just by writing the given we found it out right b d h means this angle which i'll draw it in the pink this angle must we need to prove this must be equal over here we know that b d h will be equal to a right and we know this is isosceles triangle these two sides are equal so this let me change the color again this one over here is equal to this one so basically they are equal right from transitive property b d h is equal to angle g now we should just write some statements they have two column proof so what you do is write the given first and then what do you want b d h so tell what is b d h equal to always see uh, how do you solve this what is required so make this by part you directly can't jump to the conclusion obviously this is not there so look into the first part b d h b d h is over here so what is this equal to this is equal to a so write that and now can you connect this a and g yes a and g are also equal from isosceles triangle property this is because opposite uh, sides of the uh, parallelogram are equal first one next is isosceles triangle theorem now we know a and a from transitive property or substitution property we have bdh is congruent to g that's it that's how we solve this problem um it is the key is to okay it's just explaining why and how you should do basically we know the properties we apply and we can easily solve this is it this is the answer left side but this is a mcq question so i'm not exactly sure how this will be asked so my bet is you know either this type of problem or this one these are going to come okay but i'm not sure you know uh, anything can come so that's the thing just prepare well for this now we will see another problem let's look over here they have told w x t v okay this is a parallelogram and y z t okay the other one is a parallelogram we need to prove what w x is equal to y z let's see this one is it equal to y z is this equal to this let's check it out yes obviously right because these both are parallelogram if this is parallelogram this is equal to this and this and this is equal so obviously that is a uh, they both are equal we can easily prove it what do we tell first write the given whatever is given these both are parallelograms are given now we know w x and v t is equal congruent and w t and y z is also congruent why because opposite sides of the parallelogram are congruent that is the thing now from this the transitive property means if two things are equal like this then this and this will be equal right because if the values w x is equal to t say imagine w x is phi then w v t is also phi and v t is equal to y z phi and phi again so phi is equal to phi itself right so that's how we write it very easy and straightforward again again they're just telling how you are to do this basic things now the last one there's only eight problems in this this is the last one write a paragraph proof okay for what now they have told p r s t is a parallelogram and p q okay the inner one and the outer one are parallelograms okay v and s where is v and s this is the ones yeah obviously because they are opposite angles right this must be equal to this is it yes because this p is opposite to v they are par uh, parallelogram so they are equal and even the outer ones are parallelogram so they are equal so opposite uh, angles of a parallelogram are congruent that's the main thing here parallelogram pst they are given because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent we have p and v congruent angle p angle v okay and again angle p and angle s are congruent therefore from transitive property we can tell v and s are congruent that's it they are very easy you should just look into what is given look at the question and then you can easily solve them up 
And that's the end of this topic. That is topic number seven. Again, it was an easy one. It was just the beginning of parallelograms. So we will continue more with this geometry. Uh, see you in the next video, guys.